So if you're like me and on the internet a lot, you're gonna see a lot of ads. Well, all my friends are uh, like, dude, you have to get this Adblock Plus. Why aren't you using Adblock Plus to get rid of the ads? And, I go, and I'm like, well, that leads into a controversy because a lot of the companies I like uh, rely on advertising revenue. So uh, I invited Adblock Plus to, hear, to, to come to the studio to talk about the future of advertising, how to get rid of them, and how to change the industry itself to get us good ads. Who are you? My name is Till Feida. I'm the co-founder of IO, the company that runs Adblock Plus. And I have a background in online marketing and in 2010, I joined the Adblock Plus community. It's funny because we're both in marketing. And in other words, we're responsible for all the ads that people are trying to block with your uh, new tool, right? Yeah, right. So I know the industry. So I think I know uh, what works and what doesn't work. And I think um, the advertising industry online is uh, going down a very uh, dangerous road by not making ads user friendly. And this is what we're here to change. And so what kind of, because there's a wide variety of ads. In fact, this video could be conceived as an ad because Rackspace is paying for this and it sort of is an ad, but I don't really push product and interrupt the, ad, the, the content with, a, with an, a, a video that you have to watch for 30 seconds, right? Tell me what's bad about ads and, and where you are hoping the industry goes. I think ads in general aren't bad and they're very useful to keep the internet and content free. But what advertisers have to understand is they can't annoy people into liking their brand or they cannot annoy someone into buying their product. And I think most of the current ad formats we see out there on the internet, they're just annoying. And especially technical savvy people, they don't react to them anymore. When was the last time you clicked on a banner? This is been, Never. Yeah. So yeah. I think... In fact, we call that ad blindness, right? I, right. I, I learned on the web that the right is all ads, so I don't get, my eye doesn't even go over there, right? Because I, I know that side is for where all the ads go. Now, companies are starting to do stuff like put interstitials and ads on top of the content that I, I'm actually on CNET to read or something like that, or they're running videos on top of the content before I can click in and read it. They're really doing, they're trying to get more and more of my attention as I turn off right. their advertising. But I think exactly this is creating kind of a downward spiral or a vicious circle because ads don't work, at least not with more and more people because they either ignore them or they block them. And ad revenues are going down and advertisers and websites react in a way to make them more intrusive, more flashy. And this further stimulates um, just aversion towards ads in general. So we think it's time to think about a more sustainable solution. Yeah, and while that's going on, because if you look at the web, like you're, you have a, a, an IBM, a, a Microsoft Windows laptop, that's one thing, and that we, we know what that is, and, and we've been using computers like that for 30 years now. On the other side, we're, you know, we're moving to mobile, and we're moving to wearables, and right. what's, I don't want an ad in this thing that looks like the ads I see on CNET, which forces me to sit there for 30 seconds, right? But let, we'll get into that. Yeah. What does Adblock Plus do, and let's just cover that, and then talk about what, what you can do to change the ad industry. Right, so Adblock Plus is a browser extension. You can install it with just a few clicks, only takes a few set, uh, seconds, and then all the ads are gone uh, in your browser automatically. All the annoying ads, but we'll get to that later. So um, this is our website. You can just click on the big install button and then just a few seconds later it's gone. It's currently available for Firefox, Chrome, Opera, and as of recently, Internet Explorer. We also have an Android app. And basically what it does, it makes the pages clean by removing all. Can you show me what that page would look like with the ads? Yeah, so you can easily disable Adblock Plus on a page and then refresh and then you see what the page is supposed to look like. So you have a big banner here. Um, you have um, this big green download button 
here, which many people click accidentally because yeah. they think this is what leads them to the download. Yeah. And um, some other sponsored stuff here. And by enabling Adblock Plus, the whole page will be clean from the annoying ads. And as you can see, the content moves up so there are no white spaces and the page doesn't look broken even though the ads are stripped out. Very cool. Now there's some, uh, can we g just k keep seeing what it looks like like on Facebook? What does Facebook do with, with uh, Adblock Plus? So this is our Facebook page, the Adblock Plus Facebook page. This is my stream without any ads. Yep. And disabling Adblock Plus will show you what it's supposed to look like. And on the right side you have a whole bunch of sponsored, sponsored content. Yeah. Now, Adblock Plus removes. Now, Facebook, uh, both on mobile and on desktop, is putting in uh, sponsored stories in the newsfeed. Uh, does it get rid of those as well? Yes, it does. Okay. So, um, how does it do all that? Because <laughs> uh, how does it know that the ad is an ad and not a graphic, or or a post is a sponsored post and not a a regular post? So, Adblock Plus itself doesn't do anything. Um, the elements that are supposed to be blocked are determined by filters. So as a user, you can either set up your own filters or you can subscribe to a filter list, which is available. And I think in total, there are right now over 40 different filter subscriptions out there that are created by an open source community of Adblock Plus contributors. So they make sure whenever a new ad comes out that the filters are always up to date and that they're always manually created filter rules to get rid of the annoying ads. Very cool. Do you, uh, does this cost any money to, to download and use? No, it's completely open source and 100% uh, free to use for everyone. So how do you get paid? <laughs> well, what, what we are working on is we're not out there to destroy advertising on the internet. What we're working on is we want to facilitate a reasonable middle ground. So this is how I came in. Adblock Plus has been around much longer than I was involved. And my background, as I said, is in, in online marketing and I stumbled upon Adblock Plus and I said, yeah, I totally get why people want to get rid of those pre-roll video ads and the ads just, that just take up too much space and that follow you, that track you, invade your privacy, you can be a security hazard. So I completely get why people don't like ads on the internet. At the same time, of course, ads are important to um, yeah, keep the internet free. And the idea was born to facilitate a middle ground that works for both the users that are fed up uh, with blinking banners, but also the websites that need to monetize through ads. So we started an initiative called Acceptable Ads, which has the goal to come up with criteria for advertising that works better. You might show me one of the pages that has the acceptable ads on it, or? Yeah, one, one example of acceptable ads you can find on, on Reddit. So the criteria are ads need to be static, no blinking animations, no distractions from the content. So as you can see, you have an ad here and an ad here, but they're clearly marked as an ad. They're separated from the content. They're not screaming for your attention. So that's why they comply with the acceptable ads criteria. And that's why in the default settings of Adblock Plus, those ads will not be blocked. And this is what we're working on. We want to encourage websites to use better advertising because if they do, they can reach a much larger audience because they can also show their ads to our almost 60 million active users. And how do you get paid out of that? So the idea is the whitelisting is completely free for all the small blocks out there, small companies. We do have some larger companies if they want to participate in acceptable ads, if they want to maximize their profits, then they have to pay us in order to make the whole thing sustainable. Very cool. Uh, Rackspace is a big advertiser on part of the marketing team. We have a, a fairly decent budget to, to put all these ads everywhere. How do we make sure our ads are compliant with this acceptable ads uh, uh, strategy? So we, we mostly work with the publishers, not, not the advertisers. So if you own a website and you have ad space available, if you make sure that you comply with the community generated criteria, 
then you can just go to our website, apply, and then this will initiate the community approval process to get your website on the whitelist. Okay. So uh, that's pretty cool because it works on the web. What about on mobile? Because it, it's so hard to block a, a lot of the kinds of ads that people are playing with on mobile because it's inside an app. Right. You know, and, and you, you're on Android, but not Apple, right? Not iPhone, right? No. So a Apple makes it very hard for, for an intermediary to get in between the app and the screen, right? Uh, Android makes that easier. They do make it easier, um, but unfortunately our app also got removed from Google Play uh, last year. Um, so it's, of course, harder for users to find the app. They can still download it from our website and then they have control over the incoming web traffic. So they can be really in control over what, ha what, ha what is happening on their device. And I yeah. think this is uh, important. It's an important choice that shouldn't be taken away from the user. Yeah. And soon we're going to see, a, I think, a new kind of advertising, a, a more of a pull kind of advertising. Instead of getting it up and saying, watch my ad, you know, you're going to have to wait until the user says, I'd like a beer, you know, okay, glass, I'd like a beer. And it, then it will say, hey, would you like your normal Heineken, you know, which is usually what I get. Or, and then it might say, oh, there's a couple of other brands that you might consider and we'll give you a dollar off or we'll, uh, you know, um, give you two for one or something like right. that, right? And um, that's sort of advertising because somebody's getting paid to show that to me. You know, Google in this case might be getting paid, but it's not that interruptive, you know, uh, TV style advertising where they just dominated your screen for a few a few seconds and took over, right? Yeah, I think mobile advertisers have to make sure that they don't repeat the same mistakes that they did on desktop devices, where I think as a result of l a lack of innovation, we still have basically the same ad formats we, we had 15 years ago. Yeah. And all the innovation that was put into online ads was just to make it bigger, more aggressive, more flashy, more annoying. And now I think um, we see a lot of cases where this is being repeated on the phone, where even though you have a very small screen, you have to put up with a blinking banner um, that is just distracting, that is just annoying, often leads to a scammy product that you often click on even though you didn't really want it to, uh, just accidentally. And I think those are all um, reasons why people lose trust in online advertising, why they lose uh, a sense that this is of value to them. And I think this is very important to regain this trust yeah. um, in order for the whole ecosystem to be more sustainable. One, one guy, uh, Mike McHugh at Flipboard, is trying to change this. He, he only runs big ads as you flip through the content, and the ads are almost always well-designed and beautiful and not blinky and not interruptive. You know, right. you can flip by them really pretty easily. Does Adblock uh, Plus uh, even block that kind of advertising on mobile, or does it uh, only block the kind of banner advertising that really is annoying? It probably doesn't. I would have to look into that specific case, but um, yeah, the the whole idea is to give the user control over what kind of ads they are willing to see. I think in general, everyone should block ads responsibly, and uh, make sure that you also support the publishers that provide free apps or free content on on the web. Yeah. Um, but at the same time. The user is controlled. The internet is a new medium where users don't just passively accept what is being broadcasted to them. They are in charge what is happening on their device. So with a tool like Adblock Plus, you can get full control over what kind of traffic is getting on your device and who's allowed to track you and what kind of ads you are willing to accept. Yeah, in, in the tech world, I've noticed that the business models have started shifting away from advertising that the venture capitalists are funding more and more things that charge users instead of uh, showing them ads. Um, are you sensing the same trend and it, do you think that there's going to be a happy medium or do you think it, it's all going to go one way or the other? Well, at the end of the day, this is always up to the consumer and I think we have to be prepared for additional um, monetization methods um, because you can't just stick to one method that obviously doesn't work and expect the users to accept it even though they clearly dislike it. So I think it's a good sign that new 
ways to monetize content that are evolving. Yeah. Although I think it is also important that the internet is free. We don't want paywalls on every website. This is why I think we shouldn't give up on advertising as yet. Yep. Well, thanks for what you're doing. Um, Adblock is a new company, but it's been around for, the product has been around on, yeah. on download sites for a while. Um, tell me a little bit about the company. Right. So Adblock Plus started just as a hobby project by one developer who just developed it in his free time just because he was annoyed by blinking banners. So he, just for himself, he developed it. And pretty much by accident, it just got extremely popular and this whole open source community evolved around it. And I, in 2010, I was involved in a study that analyzed the impact of ad blocking software just to measure how many revenues are, are lost as a result of an ad blocker. And this is how I got in touch. And this is when the idea was born. Yeah, there has to be some compromise. There has to be a middle ground. So the lead developer and myself, we founded the company IO, which um, now has been growing. We are now a team of uh, 15 people working on the project. So now we can really make sure um, that we will have a positive impact on the web. Very cool. Uh, where do we learn more about it? On adblockplus.org. Great. Thank you so much for coming in. My and pleasure. Thanks for what you're doing because uh, I think the advertising industry needs a whole kick in its pants. Uh, it, it's it's gone overboard, and it, it, you know, Flipboard has shown that there is an ad that works, uh, where so many ads are are just so. Ah, they yeah, annoy it's, me. It's, it's time to put the user first again. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you.